Recording progress. Hi, I'm Sherry Anderson with Professional Tour Management Training, and welcome to my Live Your Dream Travel Job Workshop. I'm hoping to give you a really good introduction to what we do as tour directors and guides and travel staff, and introduce you to our part of the industry, which I personally think is the best. So in this first video, my goal is to sort of give you an overview. So let me start with how I started. I started years ago. I was a teacher. I was a medical sales. I was in real estate, tried different careers, went back into teaching, spent all my money and time on travel. That's why I wanted to be a teacher in the first place, but really didn't think you could make money in travel. In those days, we were travel agents and they were greatly underpaid, I believe. And Or you could be a, a flight attendant, but you had to be tall, beautiful, often bilingual. And since I didn't meet those requirements, that wasn't an option for me. So I didn't think you could do it. And then one day I was on the beach in Laguna and a young woman said, if you take care of the children for the cruise line, you get a free cruise. And I just went, wow, that's what I want to do. So I wrote a year and a half back and forth to the cruise line saying, I'm, you know, I'm available, I'm available. Finally, I got, I was offered a cruise at Christmas time from San Juan, Puerto Rico, through the Panama Canal to um, Los Angeles, and then back. And I loved it. It changed my life. I mean, that one cruise changed my life. I knew that's what I wanted to do. So I continued to do it through the holidays and summer. And by fall, I was hired as a cruise host. Now, not the kind of cruise host that works for the cruise line. I was the kind of cruise host that I was responsible for my 1,550 people and only responsible for them. I had my passenger cabin. I think I had the best job on board. I traveled to destinations I had never been to. Um, Alaska, Mexico, South America, Central America, again, Panama Canal, Caribbean, Southeast Asia, China, um, up the Yangtze, uh, South uh, Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, Solomon Islands, um, Europe. I, I would do the uh, Baltic cruises. I, I took tours all the, and mainly cruises to start. And then after a couple of years, I went, oh, gosh, I want to do tours. And I learned a secret about leading international tours that I'll tell you that a lot of people don't know. And I went, oh, you know, I can do this. So at that point, my first tour was China. And this was back in the day, back in the day when we were on, oh gosh, Russian built military planes. We were in mainly Chinese hotels. We were eating food. We couldn't really identify lots of intestinal um, upset. Um, I carried toilet paper. We were lucky if we had a toilet in those days. I carried toilet paper. I carried plastic silverware for my group. Um, uh, toiletry, you know, hand wipers and washers and all of that. And it was tough in 28 days. And by the time we got into Hong Kong, we had all lost a lot, a lot of weight. And I didn't enjoy it at all. I was used to being a cruise host. I thought, oh, I just would be nice. Completely different, especially when you have challenges that you have to deal with. You have sick people, you have itineraries that would change and change things, things would be canceled. I mean, it was just, I just went, I'm going back to the ship. My next tour was South America. I think I did Venezuela. I know I did Iguazu Falls. It thrilled me to death. Um, Brazil and Argentina and more challenges. And I just went, oh, I don't want to do this. And friends tried to tra help me and train me. And, you know, I finally, finally learned to do tours and where I made really good money, even today's standards, really good money. And um, and then I would do cruises where I could kind of rinse yeah. compared to, to leading a tour. And I sort of alternated be, between the two. Today, I still work in travel. I'm working mainly locally. I still travel some, but I work mainly locally in the convention meetings and incentive market. And I love it. We're working out of these beautiful resorts. I'm taking people on harbor tours and cruises and whale watching and events that are just gorgeous and, and such. And I'll talk more about that later. Um, so that was my story. And then after doing that, probably a good 10 years, 
In fact, it was just, I just said, keep me going. I mean, I was home maybe two days a month. I, I would go to places and just go, oh, I can't. And, and I know if you're watching this, you enjoy travel and you probably feel the same way where there's certain places you go to and you've seen it in movies and history books, you've read about it and you just go, I can't believe I'm here, you know? And then I'd go, and I get paid for this. So that was my life. And um, then I went to the colleges and I said, gosh, you know, there's all these wonderful careers and nobody knows anything about them. And so I started teaching at all of these colleges. I would um, sort of stay home for a couple of weeks to do that and then go back out on the road. And um, the adult education um, started some career classes, uh, did an online course, um, 2,400 colleges worldwide through the public education of the colleges. Um, have taught students literally all over the world, wrote my textbook, the tour director training guide, which my students tell me, and I believe is the best um, book for tour directors and guides, because I'm very specific. All of my training, I'm very specific. Do what I say to say, do, say what I say to say, do a really good briefing. And, you know, here's how to, you know, your documents and your challenges and blah, blah, blah to take care of. But just try to keep it simple. Do what I say to do, say what I say to do, and do a really good briefing. And they'll think you've been been doing it forever. So that's how I got started. And since then, I've trained people through the colleges, through online, through retreats, through my training guide, um, and now through my course, Live Your Dream Travel Job. And I can't tell you how exciting it is when you help people get into careers they love. So if you're looking for a career that is fulfilling and purposeful and flexible and one where you work hard, but you're rewarded, I think. I mean, I come home from my tours and I'm exhausted, but I've used my heart, I've used my brain, I've used my body and I'm exhausted. Um, but I can do that for three, three and a half weeks at a time, easier than I can do Monday through Friday, eight to five. I burn out by Wednesday. Is this forever? Is this going on? I just, that's not where my skills are either. So if, in fact, if you do, if you're really good at that and you want something eight to five, look into working for tour operators, look in, into working for the cruise lines in their offices and accounting, marketing, sales. I mean, you can, they, they offer travel as, as their benefits. They want you to travel so you can help the, their clients more. So um, but what I'm talking about is where we actually work with the travelers. So I get calls from people and they say, can I really do this? Can I really, um, you know, here's my dream is to travel and, and da, da, da. And yes, yes, you can. And I'm going to spend the next uh, three videos trying to show you exactly how, how to do that. Um, so for instance, uh, we work for tour operators. We're not travel agents. Even my own family will contact me and say, can you make a reservation for me? I'm not a travel agent. Travel agents book the programs. I work for the tour operators. And the easiest way I can explain that is think about back in the old days when we had travel agencies and you would go into their office and in their office, you would see beautiful brochures. And for Hawaii or for Australia, New Zealand, or for China, Asia, Japan, Europe, South America. And um, a good travel agent would try to find out what kind of tour you're interested in, deluxe, budget, do you want everything included? Do you want to stay at the finest hotels, eat at the finest restaurants, have all the tours included, the finest tours, the expensive tours, the flights, the, the uh, balloons, you know, all included. You'd go obviously for a deluxe company. Or are you more like me? Like, well, you know, I, you know, I don't need to eat at the finest restaurant. <laughs> I don't need to stay in the finest hotel. I'm just going to sleep. So that's not important to me. So I might go more on the budget side. So at that point, the travel agent would call the tour operator who puts that tour together. So that brochure is put together by the tour operator. And they book the flights, the hotels, the meals, the tours, hire the transportation, the guides, hire us as tour directors. And they have they organize the whole thing. So then my job starts when the tour starts. Now, I want to stress we are extremely important. People think, well, 
you know, we just get to go along and travel. No, we are very important. First, we're important to the tour operator. It's really important that they know that you can take care of their clients. So for instance, they get people that call them and say, oh yes, I want to lead the tour. So I love people and I love travel. I'm nice. No, that's not enough. They need to know, you know, tour procedures. You know how to do the tour. Just imagine, um, okay, they have 35 people. They've each paid $3,000. That's over $100,000 if I'm figuring out that right. And that's a big investment. And that tour operator wants them to travel with them again. And we are the product. I mean, they've sold it. They've marketed it. They've done all that work. But we're the ones that are with the people throughout the tour. So if I do an okay job, and the people say, oh, it's a good tour. They'll try another tour operator. And believe me, there are a lot of tour operators. But if they say they had an excellent tour, they're not going to go with someone else. They're going to go back with that company. And that tour direct uh, tour operator expects to have 30% repeat business at, business at least. So our job that we do. So when you talk to the tour operators, they need to know you you really know how to do the job and, you know, not that you just love people and travel, that kind of thing. So, so we're important to them. We're extremely important to the tour members. And I think of it this way. If, um, first of all, they're booking because they don't want to deal with the, the problems, the details, the challenges, you know, they just want to sit back and enjoy and feel safe. And that's my job is to make them feel safe, to take care of the travel details so they can relax. Um, and, you know, it, it sounds like a lot, but like what I try to do, I think it's from my teaching days is I have a pattern. Here is a pattern. They learn the pattern. I have the pattern down. And it's it's not a hard job. It's not like learning, you know, brain surgery or something, but you can make the, what I call K-I-S-S, keep the tour simple for you and for your, especially for your passengers. And I think of them, you know, they, the saying that they say, well, when I mean, people take their last breath, you know, are they going to say, I work hard, wish I worked harder? They're going to say, I wish I spent more time with my loved ones and did what I really wanted to do and put off. And that's when we have them, when they're with their loved ones, when they're um, making those memories and taking the pictures they're going to be showing their family and sharing for years and years to come. It's really, it's all about them. You know, we want to make them happy. So we're really important to them. We're also important to the destinations where we travel. We bring a lot of money into local destinations. Um, and it may be supporting local communities, a lot of the local jobs. It may be saving wildlife because if we can, you know, people go there to see the wildlife and they can make money, community can make money off of that. They're sure going to save it more than eat it. So, you know, I, that's the part I like. It also, we bring people together if they're, now I look at it in the U.S. I mean, we need to bring our, our people together just in the U.S., get them out of their houses and back with people and, you know, that kind of social skills. <laughs> and such. But, um, but also people of the world. And that's what we do. We're sharing cultures. People understand, you know, people go back and, you know, maybe they were kind of judgmental. It's hard to be judgmental when you get to know people in other countries and really get to know them. And that's what we try to do is have that really, con you know, contact and, ex and exchange with people. You know, people don't want the tours now where they just look out the bus window and go, oh gosh, you know, that looks nice from here and go through castle after castle after castle. It all looks the same. They want to meet the people. They want, we get, we have visit. We have not sometimes spend the night with people. They really want to be more immersed in the, into the local cultures and into the, you know, what's going on locally. So that's what really makes our job exciting and really important, including to the world, the WTO, the World Travel Association, which is a really good website and resource, by the way. So um, I've been asked, can you make money in this? And yes, you can make a good living. And it's kind of a secret. Um, most experienced tour directors expect to make four to $500 a day, including their salary and their gratuities. Most tour, tour operators pay at least 200, which is really low today, to 350 salary per day. There's all your expenses, your travel expenses, your hotel, your meals, you know, all of that. And then also they um, promote your, your tips, usually five to $7 per day is still kind of average. You can figure about $5 per day per person. And you can see too, the more experience you get, the better tour operators and assignments you may get, 
but also you'll do better on gratuities. You know, people like really like your tours, you know, they're going to, you know, really tip you more. So that helps too. So I'd say four to 500. There's people that make less, make more than that, but not too many make less than that. You might, when you start out, maybe you'll make 350 a day when you start out or such. Um, working locally, leading tours, um, as a tour guide, you can do well. They'll charge $150, $250, $250 for a four or five hour tour, plus gratuities on top of that. Um, if you're bilingual, you can almost charge whatever you want to lead local tours. And, and I'll talk more about tour guides later. I want to get more into, because a lot of people know what tour guides are. I want to get more into, into what we do as tour directing. Um, when we work local for the um, convention meetings and incentive market, which again, I'll go into more detail, you can travel with them. Um, experienced, you're making about $400 a day. Um, you might start out at less than that when you start out, if you travel with the, with the groups, but you're staying at the finest resorts, literally in the world, and you're not doing narration and you're working as a team, it's more of a hospitality type position, or you can work locally. Um, which is what I'm enjoying doing. If you live in a resort area, a large city, someplace where there's a lot of, um, you know, where companies would want to come for meetings for what we call incentives, where they're whining and dining their, their top, maybe their top sales staff. Um, those are, uh, California, it's like $30, $35 an hour. Other states are less. I think Las Vegas must be up to $20, $25 per hour. California, we usually have a five hour minimum. So if we work three hours, we still get paid for five. We can do a couple assignments a day pretty easily and get into overtime and all of that without actually working the exact number of hours because of the minimums. Um, so it's, it's a wide variety. I'll try to get more specific as we go along, but I hope that helps. I've been asked if you can work full time. And yes, the next video I'm going to talk about lots, next couple of videos, I'm going to talk about a lot of different types of tours and you can, and some have slow, slow seasons and we're in others and, or a season that's really busy and they need new staff. And let me tell you right now, if you've been watching, um, if you've been traveling, you know, travels back and doing very well. If you've been watching the news, hospitality tourism is at the top of the jobs right now, job market and in the number of new jobs that have opened for us. And tour operators need good, competent tour directors. They can't just hire anybody, but they need good people because they're experienced people. Some during the, the closed shutdown got other jobs, some retired, um, and they just, and, and the experienced people, they're booked till the end of the year already for this year. So they need new people. It's a very desirable job. It's always been very competitive to get into. People sometimes pay thousands of dollars to be trained to get into our business, but right now they need people. So more than any time in my career, and, and I've been in here in it a long time. So I wanted to mention that. People, a um, couple other things I wanna mention before I, I finish for now, but um, people have talked about challenges. You do deal with challenges and, and I'll mention some in the next couple of videos, but if everything worked perfectly, I, they wouldn't need us. You know, everybody would just show up and nobody would need us and, you know, they wouldn't miss us. But because there are challenges, and especially today with delayed flights and canceled flights, I mean, just that <laughs> is job security for us. So those challenges are actually job security. Or somebody mentioned dealing with difficult people. And yes, we do. Um, and I'm not talking about people that are upset. I mean, they'll go to play, we'll go to places where it's raining. They have paid thousands of dollars to be there and now it's raining and they're really disappointed. And, you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about some personalities kind of irritating and not always. Every few tours, we get somebody like that that kind of irritates a group and can kind of be not your favorite person. But you stay professional and deal with that person and you make points with your tour members. That's when they realize you are actually working and not just getting a getting to travel for free. Um, but also once the tour's over, I don't have to see them again. Where a lot of you probably work with somebody and have them with someone for years, waiting for your retirement, so you don't have to deal with that person anymore. I never have to see them again. So to me, that's a real plus. So um, in the next video, I want to cover more specifically the types of tours that we do. 
I'm going to talk about all the different types of escorted tours that we do, the different types of tour operators, what they're looking for, and um, which you'll need if you want to get into this business. And so um, in the meantime, it's your turn. I'd like you to go to Facebook. It's on this page. And tell me, what is your ideal travel career? What does it look like? And where... Um, what challenges do you see that you have? And what questions do you have for me? Um, are you sharing this with anybody? You are welcome to share these videos. I'm only going to leave them up for a week because next week I want to really get into training people. I, I have, in fact, I started a new class called Fast Track Tour Management Training. And I want to get people in there and get them, get them ready because the tour operators are hiring now. And um, so you're welcome to share the videos, but don't wait too long. Because again, these are, and I'm going to have these available for a week. So if you want to watch them again or share them, you're, you're welcome to do so. So I hope that helps and I'll see you later.